So for this example, the problem statement is determine the force in members CD, HI, and CJ of the truss and state of the if the, if the members are in tension or compression. So we have this truss with its supports at point A and K. Of course, we see that there are hinges and we have the necessary dimensions, right? The height is four feet and the width is three feet apart with the external forces being applied at each of the joints here. So the first step is we're being asked to determine the force in member CD, HI, and CJ. So CD is right here, HI is over here, and CJ is over here. So first, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and basically do the method of sections and split it at the part where two of the forces of the members that we're being asked to solve are here, intersects, right? So we have at this imaginary line that I decided to draw. So we see that we have three members here, which is ideal because we have three static equilibriums um, that we could use to solve for the forces. And so let's go ahead and draw, I'm going to go ahead and draw the right side of this truss to solve. So now this is something that comes with practice. You'll be able just by visual inspection, inspection you'll be able to determine what will be simpler to solve because we see on the left side of the truss, if I decide to, to basically analyze this section, we have two hinges and each hinge will have two unknown, unknown forces. So it's going to be more forces to be solving for, which I want to avoid to basically speed up the process. So I'm going to draw the right side of the truss below. So I go ahead and draw that section. And of course, I'm assuming um, I'm I'm assuming all these members H, I, C, H, and C, D are all in tension. So I'm drawing the internal forces of each of these members since I'm cutting right through it. And from here, I could go ahead and analyze this um, section of the truss using our static equilibrium equation. So the, the first step is here to try to see what is the best way to go about solving this problem so you won't have to do as many steps. And one thing is... I'm going to go ahead and start at point H. So I'll be applying the sum of moments with respect to H is equal to zero, right? Since we're since we're we know this truss is in static equilibrium, that means once we analyze the right side of this truss, that means it's also in static equilibrium. So the sum of moments about point with respect to H is equal to zero. So we see the forces HI and the force um, CH, it basically has no moments because it's going through right that point. It's it's not causing any rotation about point H. But we do have the FCD causing a moment and it's going to be counterclockwise. So it's going to be negative FCD times the length perpendicular to the H, which is four feet here, four feet. And we have the external forces, the 1,500 pounds that are being applied to this structure. So we have this 1,500, this 1,500 basically producing a moment about point H. But this 1,500 at this end, since it's right at that point, is not ca causing any rotation with respect to point H. So this one, we don't have to include it with the, when it comes to the sum of moments um, with respect to point H. So let's go ahead and do these two. So we see that both of these external forces are causing a clockwise um, rotation. So they're going to be both negative, negative 1,500 pounds. And one of them is the perpendicular distance to point H is 3 feet here. And the other one is 6 feet, right? 3 plus 3 feet. We have 6 feet, and that's equal to 0. And from here, we can actually solve the internal force of member CD. So it gives us negative 3,375 pounds of force going through member CD. Now, since we do have that negative, that means our assumption of it being in tension is incorrect. That means it's actually in compression. So let's go ahead and update this. This is it, the member CD in compression. So for CD is 3,375 pounds and we're going to state it's being it's in compression so this is one of the members to solve now the next one let's go ahead is 
HI. So one thing to note is since this force HI is along the horizontal, it's best to do the sum of forces along the X direction here. So for the sum of forces along the X direction equals zero, we have negative F of HI plus um, F of CD. Since we have the value is 33.75 pounds, take away F of CH, and we're only looking at the X component. And since we have the dimensions, which essentially is the rise run, we have the hypotenuse, we essentially just use the, the ratio three over five the cosine adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to zero. So we still don't know um, f of ch, and we don't know f of hi. That's exactly what we're trying to solve for. But we also have the sum of forces along the y direction. So let's, let's go ahead and see what that gives us. So we have negative f ch, um, and we're using sine theta, which is um, opposite over hypotenuse, four fifths, take away 1500, take away 15, and take away 1500. And so we have F of CH being equal to negative 5,625 pounds. And since we have a negative, that means this member is also in compression. Since we initially assume tension, we see that this one is in compression. So FCH is equal to 5,625 pounds and it's in compression. So here's the other um, internal force of member CH. And since now we have F of CH, we can actually solve for the member HI, which basically we just plug in and solve accordingly. We get we get the force of HI is equal 6,750 pounds. And since it's positive, then our assumption of it being in tension is correct. Now, one thing to note here is be careful. Since we initially did the sum of force along the X direction, at this point, we were assuming CH member was in tension, but we found out that it's actually in compression. So meaning if it's going, if when it's in compression, it's going to the right, that means this, is actually a plus sign. So just be careful with these small details because ultimately it can give you a wrong answer. Um, so that actually gave us 6,750 pounds of tension. And so this is the method of sections, which is basically it's utilized to analyze um, trusses that perhaps if we did the method of joints and we want a specific um, force within a member instead of doing it at uh, one joint then move on to a second joint once you solve certain um, unknown forces to finally get to the joint that you need to find that um, internal force of a specific member the method of section essentially is a shortcut you basically um, decide where to cut a truss and you do the free body diagram of either or side and of course it's static equilibrium so you just apply your static equilibrium equations being equal to zero and this is and this is how to solve um, for the internal forces of specific members of a truss.